So this is the October fair TV meeting calling it to order. Um, officer reports 1st up and. We'll skip the chairman's opening remarks. I'm the vice chairperson and I don't have any remarks next secretary's report. Great, uh, so. 1st, we had uh, delayed the. Um, motion to approve our August meeting minutes just because there were some email issues last time. I think we've, we've sorted that out. Um, so, 1st, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of our August meeting dated August 30th, 2023. Okay, so move. All right, uh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. Um. In that same vein, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from our September meeting, which was dated September 20th, 2023. Um, I move we approve them. Uh, amazing. All in favor? <laughs> All right. and the motion oh, actually, carries. sorry. I can't vote because yeah. I wasn't there. I have to abstain. Wow. Fair. Um, interesting. I wonder if we can so we have to wait approve them. We have to wait for David. Yeah, we'll wait for David on the, that one then. Sorry, um, I table that. So, no, can I good. ask a question though? What did did anything further happen with the FOIA thing? Uh, other than I guess they spread the names around of, of who wrote letters. Yeah, no, I think um, so. I delivered the emails, and then I the subsequent couple that had gotten were kind of like lost in the sauce. Which again, thank you, Lee, for. Um, uh, bringing those to light, sure. um, delivered those again uh, to the requester, and it sounds like they've been delivered. There hasn't been any subsequent requests. Um, you know, but I guess my understanding is that once you've received the you know documentation from your FOIA request, it's up to you to do whatever you want with them. Seems like much of a do much ado about nothing when all is said and done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems that way. All right. Well, then I'll I'll table my my vote on the September meeting minutes until we've got a an appropriate quorum of folks who are at that meeting. Okay. Is that it, Will? That's it from the secretary. Okay. Perfect. So now we go to the production manager's report, Luke. Um, yeah, I don't have too much tonight. I mean, it's like, like we kind of mentioned, it hasn't been too, too crazy busy from the past few meetings. Um, but I just want to kind of give a recap uh, about the CAC grant money. Uh, that is finally in the, the fund um, account. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, ordering the equipment that we um, put on the grant list and uh, getting, getting the equipment and uh, filing the report to send back to the uh, CAC. And then uh, the other thing I mentioned last meeting was the Peg Pisha grant. Uh, I'm in the process of applying for that now, uh, probably to be submitted by probably by the next meeting. Um, and then that's that's to get equipment to replace the current uh, broadcast servers that are uh, out of warranty and um, discontinued. So. That will replace that and help help make things a lot more smooth and uh, a lot easier on our end and in the end user we'll see a pretty big difference as well. So great. <clears throat> yep. And that and and uh, that if I if we do get granted that money and we do get um, the equipment to replace it, that would probably take place in the summer because I know that grant doesn't they don't um, issue the funds until I think. February or March, so obviously we can't do it when we have a bunch of meetings because it will have some downtime. So summer seems, you know, we have some days where we can kind of schedule that in and not have to worry about missing a meeting or having, you know, too much downtime. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, can I ask about the Zoom rooms? Yeah, at risk um, of being yelled at. Sorry, <laughs> bud. Um, yeah, so. I know the town, they, they, again, they're back, back in the rooms working on those. I know Dave uh, Kelly had a list of um, basically a punch list of things that he found that weren't up to par. Uh, I know they're, they're, they, we are using them 
for the town meetings at the fire station, uh, fire school, and uh, upstairs in the town hall. So they, they are using them, but there are is a punch list that they're doing now. That um, again, I don't. You'd have to check with Dave Kelly more to hear a timetable. And then for the board of ed um, setup, that's still a mess. So they're supposed to be there tomorrow and Friday, uh, working on that. So, like I said, I, I don't know too much about what they're planning on doing, but hopefully by when they leave, it's you know somewhat functional and operational to where we can actually use it, like we do the uh, town ones, but. Uh, like I said, I, I can't give you 100% because they're not giving us 100% of uh, what they're planning on doing. So. so, so I was just watching the League of Women Voters um, thing. What what were you using for that? So that is a like a, like a rally cam. So that is essentially one of the cameras that is mounted on the town hall side. But it's actually the Board of Ed's property, so we, we're just borrowing it from right. them for now because it's their setup, and uh, so it's not perfect. But it, you know, it kind of gets the job done for until they finish the setup. Over it's just there. a fixed camera. Uh it's on a tripod, so yeah, it's just one one fixed camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a question, Luke, about <clears throat> the traffic on WebEx tonight. I feel like we've never had an issue before. Yeah, so um, I know there's three other commission meetings. Um, there was three other ones at seven o'clock, and then the fourth WebEx was being used by the um, the debates tonight. So that was um, confirmed by Jen Carpenter that the fourth WebEx was free tonight, and that's why it was being used for the um, the meeting at for the debates. So that's why we can't use it tonight. Okay. Usually yeah. they tell usually they tell us um, in advance. Jen sends a note um, when I send the agenda over, but I guess she didn't. Um, anyway, I mean, I guess this worked out. But Luke, have you referred to um, Jackie's email to you and me from a couple um, of days ago? Which one was that? Uh, um, let me see if I can pull it up. Let me see too. Okay. Uh, she sent a note to you, me, and Dave Kelly with the new website features. I wanted to ask if we can switch the process. Oh yeah. Up. So that. I talked to Jeff because Jeff's um, one of the other freelancers that we have, and he handles posting that um, the archives. Um, and Jeff said that Dave Kelly used to do it before, so technically Dave Kelly is responsible for that page. So I didn't want to step on his toes and make a decision. So I asked him. He hasn't got back, so maybe he's out today. <clears throat> okay. Um, so do you want to? Why don't you just? Because she's writing to you, so. Do you want to, you know, reply? Well, yeah, I, like I said, I, I'm not 100% sure who is responsible for that, but Jeff said he thinks Dave is. So I just want, I wanted to check with Dave first before saying, you know, this isn't my, my call or, you know, whose call it is. I didn't want to, you know, misspeak and then, you know, it gets back to Dave or whoever that. Well, what know. is her, what is her point here? She, so she basically wants us to set it up like the, be um board of selectmen page where they have the the name of the meeting and then it has the video the agenda and the the minutes all together okay. on every single meeting i mean on the actual video itself we have we list the agenda so right. i mean but like i said i'm i'll i'll wait to see if dave gets back tomorrow if he doesn't then i'll just message her and say i'm waiting for dave to get back cuz you know, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to misspeak and then give the wrong information and then it gets back that, you know. Okay. Thanks. Yep. But yeah, that, that would be something that, you know, I can do or Jeff, because technically, technically, I think I'm not 100% sure, but I think Jeff, so Jeff works for us, but I think he worked for Dave first doing the archive work and then Jerry brought him on as uh, you know to do some producing and whatnot so that's why i think 
Jeff's, even though Jeff, it works for us, like he was doing that for Dave first, I think. That, that's what my understanding after talking to Jeff. Okay. It's just, just I'm a little lost on who's, who was working for who, but I don't think that really matters. Yeah, that's, that's why I, I, I kind of wanted to talk to Dave first to clarify it before. Before getting, you know, muddy with the whole answer back and forth thread and then, you know, pointing fingers and whatnot. So. Okay. Okay, Luke, so that's it from you. Yeah, yeah, it's it. and, and any more any other questions, but I mean, um, that's good for me. That's. That's all I got today. Okay. Great. Um, now we have Dave on, so we want to go back to will and, um. Have a motion to approve those September minutes. Yes, please. So, Dave, while you were, uh, joining, we approve the August minutes. Uh, we need you here just because Paula wasn't, uh, at the September meeting to approve the September minutes. Um, and so I am, will again, make a motion to approve the minutes of our September meeting dated September 20th, 2023. I'll second it. Great. Uh, all in favor. Um, okay. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, that is it for the secretary's report. Okay. Did, uh, <laughs> so, well, sorry. Where I don't remember where we were, but are you sending in the, the minutes? Um, yeah. So okay. after the meeting, I'll send through the minutes to uh, the town clerk and the okay. commission and Luke for his benefit uh, in CC. Um, for and then my, those two my, under, my understanding is that the video, I'm not clear who's host for tonight, but the video, whoever is recording this, um, it goes up automatically. Like I've never done anything. Yeah. So it, so I'm the host for tonight. But uh, so once I hit record, it saves to the cloud. So then Jeff is the freelancer guy. He's the one who pulls it off the, the cloud and then oh. posts it on like the town website, uh, the YouTube page. Right, but I didn't save it to the, it automatically saves to the cloud. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. well, you could pick, it automatically defaults to the cloud, but you could pick to the computer or whatnot. But yeah, it's automatically to the cloud. Okay. Um, and then that, so, Speaking of that, that's the site that she was talking about in the email. So every commission meeting, any that's done via WebEx like this, all the commissions, right. that goes to the meeting recording page and then the town's YouTube page, not the Fair TV YouTube page. And that's what Jeff does the archive work on, the town YouTube page. Okay. Um, fine. So it looks like she's back. I believe she was on maternity leave. Jackie, that's um, Brenda's uh, chief of staff. So I assume that she might be back now and you might hear more from her. Um, I'm not sure how that impacts anything for us, but just a point of reference. Gotcha. Uh, Dave, do you want to, do you have any remarks? Going back to opening remarks, do you have any report? Um, no, I mean, I wanted to mention something, but I, in the scheme of priorities, I, I guess would, would lead, the way I, the way I've written the agenda would lead discussion about the CAC fall under, it's not really new, is that new business? Sure, yeah, that's, that's next anyway, so yeah. Well, um, it's right here. Uh, okay, it's right over there. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's one thing I wanted to bring up. I, in the interest of you know moving to new business, and I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm going to say it um, anyway. Um, just bear with me. I'm just switching. Um, sorry, I'm just giving. Just give me one second. Sorry. Take your time, David, because I don't have a whole lot to, re to report. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just trying to get into my car and I'm not sure I have the key. Um, no, I don't. Um, 
Yeah, I missed it. Hey guys. Okay, well, these two agenda items under new business, I don't have any information about either A or B, so I can't speak to what he wanted to talk about for the CAC grant and the equipment and streaming quality as a whole. So, so I, can, I can address the, I believe I can address the CAC thing. Okay. Because at the last meeting, Dave asked me to sort of look into what this whole CAC thing is. Um, so I did some, some research. <laughs> the short answer is it's basically an organization in total disarray. Um, I mean, they have this six page uh, uh, charter that talks about all these great things they want to do that they're, they sort of are, are, I don't know how much you all know about the CAC, but it's basically a clearinghouse for all the various uh, public access channels, um, they they provide sort of a community for the various channels to get together and talk about stuff. But their primary um, mission is to deal with these grant applications. As I understand it, a hundred thousand dollars comes from Altice that goes into a pot, and all the various um, uh, access channels submit grant applications. Then the the, the a subcommittee meets to review them um, and they make recommendations on how much each grant should be awarded. Um, then they uh, send that recommendation up to the full CAC and the CAC votes. That's pretty much it. Um, their website is a mess and, and they haven't posted minutes or agendas for the last two and a half years. They haven't met in person for the last two and a half years. And so I started looking at some previous um, minutes to see what they do. And basically, you know, the various representatives from the various towns say, well, in Fairfield, we just bought an X or we're having trouble with Y. And, and then they, you know, pretty much talk about, well, over here, we've, we've, we've solved it this way, those kinds of things. That's pretty much what I found. What's what's most important is that Fairfield, if I'm doing my math right, Fairfield could, can have five representatives on the CAC. Three of them are supposed to be appointed by the first electman or the first select woman, whichever. One is can be representative from the Board of Education, and one can be from the library board. And oddly, um, for the library board. Um, they're very specific about what person can be qualified to be on the board. So right now, um, it lists Jerry and um, a guy named Stuart Strelzer, who used to be on the Fair TV Commission, and Tom Flynn as the three representatives on the CAC from Fairfield. I'm I don't know. You all might know better than I whether Tom Flynn was ever on the. Board of Education, but it seems like when he was on the CAC, he represented the Board of Education. But the bottom line is, unless Tom Flynn is still part of the CAC, which I bet he doesn't even know he is, we have no representation on the CAC. And in the minutes that I looked at, um, there was a lot of participation by, especially by Tom, on discussions about different issues that were being faced by. Fair TV at the time. So, um, uh, I mean, I can talk to Dave about how we need to put this back before the first select woman if she wants to name somebody now or wait until after the election or whatever. But right now, we basically don't have um, representation unless, again, as I say, that Tom still thinks he's part of the CAC, which actually doesn't make sense because you're limited, they're two year terms. Uh -huh. So, um, he probably is not mm -hmm. on, on, on the CAC. Um, so, um, you know, that's pretty much the sum total of it. I, I was in touch with, well, the other thing I would mention is that, that 
the, the chair and vice chair of the CAC are both from Orange, um, which strikes me as being something of a conflict of interest. Now, maybe they're the only ones who are willing to do it, <laughs> but they have a lot of power over these grants um, if they're in fact running. And I, I, I'm sure they are because the vice chair, this Marlene Silverman, Mar Marlene Silverman uh, said the chair, hey, named Ron Davis, uh, had been ill and they hadn't been having meetings and but those two people have seems to me an inordinate power about a power over these grants um so um that's worth um um thinking about the only other thing that i i discovered is there are links on their website to fair tv government and fair tv education but the links are broken they don't work um, I don't think anybody would go there to access those channels anyway, but the links are broken. Um, so it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a mess. Um, but I think it behooves us to get some representation on the CAC, um, because we're one of the bigger entities. If we're going to, if we're allowed 5 uh, people. Oh, and it, it, there's also, you can also have 1 non voting person. Who is, I guess, um, it would be like Luke being the manager of the of the system, um, which I guess explains why Jerry was on it. But it seemed to me in a couple of minutes I looked at that Jerry was um, making votes. Um, so, um, you know, it, I guess it depends on whether we have an interest on, you know, improving our representation on the the commission. Um, that's. That's pretty much all I could glean from it. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know if I understand this correctly, but so. You're saying that the different cable access channels have representation on this, but yet they're the ones who are voting on whether to approve the grants. So. Well, there's a subcommittee. Um, you, oh, you, I, I, yeah, you have to recuse yourself if you're voting. You cannot oh, vote okay. on one of your own grants. Got it. Got it. I, okay. got, that's in that's in the bylaw. Um, but basically, Fairfield's not the only community that seemingly doesn't have any representation on the CAC. There are others that are just empty of any names at all. Huh. That's so weird. Yeah, now, it, it, now I mean, it's weird because I, when I applied for the grant, because when I stepped in, uh, Marlene emailed me and said, "Hey, uh, I think it was Marlene and." I forgot who someone from the town contacted me and said, Hey, Jerry started filling this out. Can you just sign it and take over and just submit it? Cause it needed to be submitted by a, a certain date. Um, right. And it's, and it's interesting to me that they never mentioned anything like, Hey, just so you know, um, in order to get this grant, you need to have X, Y, Z for representation or just so you know, there's no fair TV, uh, no fear, fear representation anywhere. It's just interesting that they wouldn't have mentioned that, you know, before. I, you know, you don't have to have representation on the commission to make a apply for a grant. Yeah. Um, it's just that we don't have a voice. Voting on the grants or the recommendations from the subcommittee. Um, to, to have any voice at all. Gotcha. I mean, I think, I mean, for my. From where I sit, I think maybe, I think Lee, you alluded to it. Like maybe we wait for this election cycle to come through and see who who's in the you know respective positions, and then use this as an opportunity to say, hey, like if we're going to participate in this as a town, we're going to do it appropriately, which would mean we'd have representation from the board of ed, from you know Luke, right. from the commission, et cetera, and, we, and kind of. Be, I don't think we. All yeah, I don't think we. I don't think we lose anything by waiting until after the yeah. election because the the the, the applications uh, I think have to be in by the fifteenth of February, if I if, I, if my notes are right. Um, so there's time, um, and it's certainly time to get somebody to. I don't. I would be amazed if they have a another meeting between now and the end of the year. Um, because they've been so sporadic, um, you know, and there's just not much there to to hang your hat on of, of what they do. Mm 
Is there a dilemma? I've dumbfounded everybody. <laughs> it sounds so peculiar. That was so amazing. <laughs> David, are you with us? I am. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, Lee just went through the whole his yeah. whole, all of his research on the uh, okay. cable advisory council. Is there any anything actionable on our end? I'm just saying, and I'll be brief that, that we we apparently don't have any representation on the uh, council now, and we're entitled to if my my if I'm reading it right, we're entitled to five people on. The commission, one has to be appointed by the library board, one has to be appointed by the board of education, and then three appointed by uh, the first select woman or the first, first select man, whoever. Um, we can't we can't appoint ourselves to be on it. Uh, it doesn't seem. Um, so um, we were just saying that um, I don't th I, I don't think we lose anything by waiting till after the election to bring this before. Whoever is in the first selectman's chair and say, you know, we should have some representation on this committee. Is there any, I mean, can we just, I know it's only three weeks away, but is there any reason we have to wait till after the election? No, you don't have to, but I, I don't think they're going to, there's nothing that's going to happen as far as I can tell between now and the end of the year in terms of this mm -hmm. committee. And they haven't done anything really in the last two and a half years. I Except see. to vote on these grants. I see. Yeah, and, okay. and I think like you know, no one's going to commit to start going to these meetings when, you know, in three weeks, it's unclear if they'll still be. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they'd have employed, actually, if you will, in those positions. I so, would be stunned I mean, if they it, had the meeting yeah. between now and the end of the year. They haven't had one in two and a half yeah. years, and there doesn't yeah, seem to be any pressing reason. Okay. Oh, she did. She did. This Marlene did mention that Ron Davis, who's the chair, uh, has some health issue, is which is part of the reason they have not been meeting. Luke, that's the guy who called you. Yeah, we, we followed up with. I, I yeah. sensed something was, you know, perhaps he was perhaps unwell. Uh, yeah, I kind of get that sense too. Okay. All right. Well, we then why don't we? I think to certainly, um, you know, do you want to engage, you know, maybe the week of the elections, what, the 7th? So, you know, I don't know, the following week. I mean, I don't think we have to wait that much longer. If there's a no, you don't, do much, you don't have to yes. make that much longer. My sense is that um, you, would, I think you, David, would have to bring the, this to the, the attention of, Whoever is in office, um, that we we okay, need. Okay, sorry, sorry guys, I gotta put this on. I gotta put this on hold for a second. I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah. So David has to bring it to. Yeah, I think so. Wins the election, and truth be told, nothing's gonna happen until inauguration in January. I mean, you can put it on the radar, and have them know that like. You know, when they get into office, when they're actually inaugurated. Okay. Yeah. Was it it's, inauguration is December, isn't it, Luke? Oh, is it? Yes, yeah, like December. I thought it was like December 7th or something like that. Okay. Oh, I think November 27th. Oh, so it's even sooner. So oh, wow. November 27th. Yeah that's, yeah, that's when they wanted us to cover that, remember? That's a, oh, mon yeah. that's a Monday night after Thanksgiving. Is it the 27th? Let me see. I think they're right. Yep, November that 27th. Right. But you, you know, you certainly can wait until then. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I think that makes sense. Okay. okay. Um, and then the other item under new business is equipment and streaming quality as a whole. David, yeah, is that I, th I think, yeah, I think we covered that earlier with, uh, um. Luke, like the Zoom room update, basically. I have to go.
Okay. Um, so what is, what is, uh, what's the deal? Is there anything outstanding aside, you know, from Dave Kelly's, uh, purview that we haven't covered? Um, nothing really. I kind of gave a quick recap about the zoom rooms that they're still not set up, but it's kind of doing still still in progress basically. So okay. they're supposed to be doing, um, the board of ed one tomorrow and Friday. Um, so I should know more by next week and then, uh, the town, I think they were there earlier this week. And, uh, I, I guess that we have to follow up with Dave on that. Cause I'm not sure what they've done or haven't done over there yet. Okay. But that, that, that one's operational, like I said, so that's just punch list stuff that to fine tune it where the BOE one's still not functional. Okay. Paul, anything else? Nope. Is there anything okay. that you wanted to say? That oh, just, I, I was going to, um, I just never have had really the, the time, um, to send a letter, um, you know, expressing our concerns about, you know, FOIA and how it was being used. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know that. And I don't know at this point if I will send that letter. I don't you know how much debate or discussion this requires, but I just um, unfortunately got sort of swept under, you know, the rug with respect to other things other commitments. And you haven't gotten any other um, correspondence about the FOIA request or any updates or anything, right? No, I just, um, you know, uh, I think we all agree. We thought the way it was used was not only tasteless, um, but, you know, there's a question of, you know, protocol and, um, you know, if we did get another request, I'd have serious reservations about following it and considering, you know, how it was basically weaponized to reveal, you know, people's emails who are writing the town, you know, with legitimate concerns, you know, or a view that they have. Um, so, you know, maybe this is just better candidly to sit and wait for, you know, the time being, but I know that if, you know, I send that if I send a letter, there's going to be a response and then a response to that and so on and so forth. And I just simply don't have, um, you know, the, the time to get engaged in that now. Um, but, you know, with the caveat that I, I would be definitely concerned if another request came in that we thought was, you know, intended to, you know, essentially harass fellow citizens you know, for the purpose of harassing fellow citizens who had simply written into the town. Does that makes sense yeah, for everybody? I, I, yeah, I think it's a valid point. I think, you know, there's, there's two ends of it, right? Is like one is understanding what are the other boards, commissions, you know, committees, et cetera, doing, you know, the, the assertion was made um, that every other committee posts every, you know, bit of communication that is sent to them before every meeting. I, I don't know that I, that that's true. Um, that seems like hyperbole. Um, so it'd be good yeah. to understand what are, what, what's like, what's a, what's the norm that's being undertaken by other committees and then what's actually required. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and those two can be separate things. Um, and then kind of the, the, the follow off of that is that understanding, you know, what is, um, subject to a FOIA request, right? And I think that's where, you know, the, the differentiation between someone who might be an RTM member or on the board of selectmen who's an elected official versus uncompensated volunteers on a committee that technically isn't part of the town. Um, you know, what are, what are the obligations there? Um, and then the kind of the, the tertiary follow on off of that is if citizen emails to an unelected uncompensated board or excuse me uh commission it are subject to FOIA requests what is the responsibility of the town and of us to notify people before they write to us that anything they say can be made public record including their email addresses phone numbers names and physical addresses um you know 
as a citizen, like I, I would be concerned and I would think twice about messaging the representative. So is none know, of I, think, that I think we should get some clarity. Yeah, yeah. Is none of that in writing anywhere? The, the guidelines for the FOIA? Because all I saw was one little briefing that if you want to FOIA the town, mm -hmm. you can, but there must be written guidelines someplace. This can't be just like a whim of somebody to say, you know, let's, let's release all of this stuff. Yeah, so I did, I did a decent, maybe more than I'm proud to admit, uh, a bit of research on the FOIA piece, just because it's interesting to me, you know, for non-fair TV reasons. Um, right. And so the Connecticut, the state of Connecticut website outlines some details around FOIA requests, and it is, you know, dense, <laughs> for sure. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm far from a lawyer. Uh, and, you know, I'm average intelligence, but from what I could gather, I, I didn't see anything in there that has any sort of indication that letters from citizens to town committees or town officials in any capacity are subject to FOIA requests, right? There, there's a ton of um, language around things like agendas and meeting minutes and and, um, and votes and those types of things. and And more what you would categorize as like official, right? Like documentation. Um, I didn't see anything about if, you know, you know, John Q public writes a letter to a commission about something that they're considering that all of a sudden that's public record. I, you know, and, and I think again, in our particular situation, we are notably different than other boards and commissions in the sense that we're not elected, we're appointed. Um, that fair TV technically isn't, it seems like part of the, you know, it's funded separately from the rest of the Fairfield government. Something I, to be frank, haven't still wrapped my head around. Um, so if a citizen is essentially emailing an alias that goes to other private emails of other citizens, I, I don't know how that holds up under the state of Connecticut's view of a FOIA request. Um, and then, you know, there's also then the town's interpretation of, of FOIA and, you know, what they're requesting. So I think, you know, it's very possible that the person who processed this request is just, you know, in, in good faith and doing, um, doing their job is taking a fairly, uh, small L liberal view into the request and saying, oh, if it's been requested and it's a town commission, we'll return it. Um, but I'd be curious to see what the town attorney or, uh, whoever the right authority is, what their opinion would be. Cause it feels inappropriate to me. What if we went back to the, cause the, the request came via this paralegal, right? In HR. Right. So that's the, the process for, you know, uh, the original request came directly to us, which. We, as the fair TV condition, do not process for requests. Um, yeah, the, the appropriate process is you reach out to your town, generally speaking, your, your towns or municipalities, uh, human resources department, and they process that request. Um, and if there's any sort of like, um, you know, depending on the nature, the nature of the request, uh, some things cost money and take time. Right. And you, as the requester are responsible for funding, uh, the cost of processing your own FOIA request. Um, in this case, obviously it was, you know, simply emails it didn't require uh, a whole lot of movement of resources or for any sort of cost. Um, but that that's the route to go through. And I think, you know, again, the, the human resources department of the town is simply kind of moving something along the chain and not necessarily taking a critical view, um, of, you know, the legitimacy. Right, but again, but again, they have to be operating under some written guidelines to, and, and, you know, I'm happy to, if you want me to, I'm happy to write back to her and say, you know, on behalf of the Fair TV Commission, we request, you know, whatever written guidelines there are that the town uses to process FOIA requests. See what they, what they send back. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be great. And. If, if you don't mind undertaking that, I think it'd be interesting to see what exactly, like what's written down, what's codified and what's yeah. actually required. And then what are the, and I think I had asked this, and I don't think we ever got an answer back, but like, what are the rest, 
like is the board of ed like you know I'll, I'll pick on the board of ed for a second but like is every member of the board of ed posting every email text message and transcript of every conversation they've had in the month between their meetings of issues that have been brought to them by their neighbors by their friends and by other citizens because to me that is the equivalent of what was right. you know being requested of us well, um and but I want to my see, guess I, is I, no I want to see but first, I, I could be wrong yeah I want I, I would yeah. first want to see what they have in writing because this yeah. just may have been a a you know anyway um David are you okay if I do that oh do we lose him no he should still be here no, no I'm, st I'm sorry please, please That's explain right. to me again what you're uh want to write them I'm proposing that and I'm happy to do it on behalf of the commission, write to the paralegal who processed the FOIA request and ask her to share with us what written guidelines the town has for processing FOIA requests and go from there to see if it's- Yes, that's a great- really covers. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. So okay, I mean- Ready to go. And it you know, I want to really, you know, think it through. And unfortunately, in my position, I don't have access to um, email work aside from my uh, side from my phone, which is hardly a, a good way to, you know, go about this. So, you know, sorry about that. Right, but I'm happy to do it. I, I may not be able to do it for a week or so, but um, I'm happy to do it and see right. what we can. Okay. Because this may come up again. Oh yeah, and we would be wise to get in front of it. Um, I mean. Basically, you know, an individual, a resident from the town didn't like, you know, our didn't like how we were deciding something, so decided to, so that was sent to us through a FOIA request, and then, you know, with that information, decided to blast it out on social media to inform other citizens, quote unquote, this is, you know, this is who's against this position. Right. Right or just about that, and uh, you know, this and like this, um, presuming she is a citizen, is going to resort to such tactics. We should at least find out what, you know, what is uh, allowed, as you said, and what's yeah. not. Yeah, I'm happy to okay. do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lee. That'd be great. Um. Okay. Um. I think we can adjourn the meeting then, unless people have other things to discuss. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, do you want me to stop the recording now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, meetings adjourned at 9.03, and our next meeting is November 15th at 8 p.m.